Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we begin with a prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together in your name. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us as we prepare for First Holy Communion. We ask that we might always grow in a deeper relationship with your Son, who gives us the wonderful gift of his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So first, thank you for interrupting Taco Tuesday to come out here. Vern is not very good at scheduling things around Taco Tuesday, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so you, your kids all survived first penance, which was all we, first penance is probably my favorite sacrament. Um, I get a lot of great stories from first penance. I didn't have anybody commit adultery this year, but I did have that before. <clears throat> um, so now that you know they've experienced first penance, now we're uh, getting them ready for first Holy Communion, and uh, we're excited for that. It's always a very beautiful day, first Saturday in May. You know, we start out the month of May with our Blessed Mother, and what a beautiful way uh, for your kids to receive their First Holy Communion and by also celebrating our Blessed Mother. So it's a, a wonderful combination of everything there. Uh, my part of the talk is very brief. Verna will go on until about 9.30 probably. Uh, she just, she talks a lot. Um, but, you know, we've, uh, you've probably seen the way we do uh, First Holy Communion the past couple years. We're, uh, we've moved it back to just one Saturday. Um, and then the, everything is pretty much the same. Uh, I decided I wanted to change it up a little bit this year. Um, you know, since it's uh, the first time that your kids are going to receive First Holy Communion, um, you know, I want them to receive it, uh, you know, in the, the most reverent way possible. So. Uh, the church tells us that the, uh, the norm for reception of Holy Communion is on the tongue, and then reception in the hand is an option. So for their first Holy Communion, they'll receive on the tongue. Um, we'll also have a couple kneelers set up, so they'll receive kneeling and on the tongue. Um, that's the way we've done it in previous parishes. It's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful thing for them to receive their first Holy Communion that way. After that, that's up to them, it's up to you. Um, but, you know, I want them to, to start out in, in, you know, what in my opinion is the, the most proper way to receive that gift of our Lord in the Eucharist. Um, aside from that, you know, we look forward to the day. I know it's going to be sunny. Our Blessed Mother wouldn't give us a, uh, a rainy uh, First Holy Communion Day. And I'll make sure to talk to her about that to make sure she doesn't give us any rain that day. Um, but, you know, it's always, it's, it's always great getting to see your kids, getting to know your kids. Um, they're, they're, they're funny, that's for sure. Um, but it's, you know, it's just a, a real pleasure for us to, to have them in our program and to, uh, for you to entrust them to us. It's a, it's a great privilege that we have, so I want to thank you for that. Is there anything else I was supposed to say? All right, so my part's done. That was it. Time to go back to Taco Tuesday. So I will hand it over to Verna. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. So when you came in, if you came in after and didn't get a packet, I have a couple things that we handed out to you to help you um, with your preparation for your children. So yes, like a Father said, your children all pretty much made the first reconciliation. There were a few that, um, I know we still have a few more children that are going to be done. So this now starts our preparation for the Eucharist. Miss Bridget, the first slide, let's see. Okay, so everyone knows that First Eucharist will be here in this church on May 6th. There are two times, 10 and 12.30. Everyone should have received an email with their child's time, okay? So we ask that you, that's the time that you receive, we ask that you really keep that time, write it down, get it out to your family, friend, whoever you're inviting. Um, we really don't want to change anyone, okay? So, there are the times we have a split in half. We have over 90 children, 
So we kind of have 45, 46 in each celebration, and that is a good number. So then also we can make sure that you can invite as many people as you like. Um, we will be using the first pews, the ones right here in the front, and the rest of the church will be available for any guests. So there will be no limit on how many people you can invite. There will, however, if that horrible thing comes back and we get restrictions, then we will plan accordingly and let you know what's going to happen. But we're gonna pray that does not happen and we can go on on May 6th. Again, there'll be two time slots. They've all been emailed. If you did not receive an email, please see Bridget afterwards to, and she will be happy to resend it. All right. I think that's all I have on there. Again, it'll be here. If the rehearsal night, which will go on the website, I don't have it on the packet, will be that Wednesday, May, May 3rd. Whatever May 3rd is. Is that Wednesday? Wednesday. Right, Wednesday. Okay. And the time will coincide with whatever mass your child has. If they're in the 10 o'clock, I think rehearsal's at 5, 5.30. And if they're in um, the 12.30, It'll be in that time. Again, we'll get into that more as we go through, and again, the website will have it. On the website, I did not hand this out to you guys tonight, is a first Eucharist question and answer. So if there's some questions you have um, about first Eucharist, about receiving, check that. And if it didn't answer your questions, always feel free to reach out to myself, um, Bridget, one of the priests, the deacons after Mass on Sundays. They'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay. The next is First Holy Communion, this little pamphlet I gave you. I came across it while I was buying stuff for the Faith Formation children and everything. And it just, it's, it's a great read. It just tells you that First Communion or Holy Communion is over and over again. We don't just receive it once and that's it. We don't get all this preparation, all these months of getting your children ready, ready for this day, half of them nervous, excited, Whatever they're feeling, everyone's dressed real pretty and handsome. They receive communion and then they never come back. That's not how communion works. So this little pamphlet also answers some of those questions on helping you prepare. We do have a lot of families sometimes that don't have both parents as Catholics. So this helps you with your child because it's really important that you reiterate and you go over that with your children. I mean, we get them two times in prep class and then we get them for the faith formation kids, and then we get them at the retreat. So they have to keep doing it over and over again. The Catholic school kids at GARS, they get it over and over and over again in some of the other Catholic schools. So it's important that we're constantly going over that with your children, whatever we send stuff home, and even after they come to the prep classes or the retreat. So this is a good read if you guys want to read it. Um, it's here and available for you. One of the papers I gave you tonight is the important dates. So here on this paper, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You have the preparation masses. Yes, we ask that you make those masks. If you miss the mass and you can't make it, there's no makeup. It's mass. Mass is supposed to be every weekend. So these three dates are specifically for your children to come as a family in this church. If you can't make the mass time that we have selected here, we try and use the 930 Mass on Sunday in Gibstown because the church is bigger. It's more geared to the children. There's also children's liturgy every week. Um, Father will give a special blessing. So we want the community to know that your children, there are children in our program, there's children in our parish preparing for sacraments. We do the same for confirmation. So we ask that you try your best to make these Masses. Again, don't emailing us to say you can't make it there's nothing you can do, there is no makeup. You miss mass on this weekend, you've missed mass that weekend. So do your best to get there and bring them because them seeing and hearing the words will be more familiar when they come to their first Eucharist mass. Also, if you, when you bring your children to mass, it's okay to bring them up with you when you receive communion. We teach the children that if they come up with their parent, there's no need to leave them in the pew, they're old enough they're gonna be receiving the sacrament soon to bring them up with you because they'll get a special blessing from the priest or the deacon. And what we always ask them to do is cross their arms over their chest, okay? And if you're a parent that's not Catholic and you wanna come up with your child, you're welcome also. 
Again, just cross your, do this, and you'll get a special blessing. But this way, it brings your child right up close as you're receiving, all right? So there are three scheduled masses, one each month. And again, we ask that you try and make that mass. If you don't make that mass that weekend, or you come to one of the other masses, you really go in Swedesboro every Sunday, that's fine too. We have those envelopes we gave out to you in the beginning. There's envelopes in the back of the church. Just stick them in the, in the offertory for your child. There'll be two workshops. I know reconciliation, we only had one. There will be two for communion because there's more to cover. Again, as I said before, if your char child attends Guardian Angels School, they do not need to attend the workshop. Okay, Ms. Grenier takes care of them. She, treat, she, train, she teaches them and goes over the lessons with them. Um, any other child that goes to a different Catholic school or all the children that are in faith formation classes, they are to attend this workshop. There are two scheduled workshops. There are two different dates for each one. These are required, okay? They can't miss it. This is a sacrament. Can't do it at home. They need to come to these workshops. So there are one in March and one in April, and there'll be sign-ups for you. Obviously, if your child is sick, they can't come. But please make every effort to sign up for one of those workshops when the time opens. Then the first Eucharist retreat is in April, April 29th. Used to have it earlier in April, and it always coincided with baseball weekend, opening day. I, we made it April 29th, which is actually the week prior to your child receiving the sacrament. Everyone, whether your child attends Guardian Angels Catholic School, any other Catholic school, faith formation, are required to attend the retreat. At that retreat, your child will learn where, they'll get their seating assignment, so they'll know where they're sitting. We will be practicing. Um, as you know, Father just said, we're changing. We, all children will be receiving on the tongue. All children will be receiving kneeling here at the altar. So we will be practicing that. I'm hoping to have some deacons available. We will also be practicing at the rehearsal, right? So the retreat is required. So please make every effort to make the, so if you're in the 10 a.m. mass, your child is to come on the 29th from 10 to 11. If you're at the 12.30 mass, your child comes from 11.30 to 12.30. Please don't ask if my child that's in 12.30 can come at 10. That's gonna to be totally confusing for your child because we are actually gonna seat them and we're gonna, they process in, there's a whole bunch, and they're already gonna be nervous, so we ask that you please Respect that we want you to come during their child's retreat. All right. This information will also be on the website. It'll be in our monthly newsletters that Bridget pulls out. You, I gave it to you today so you can put it up somewhere and see them. Mark the dates. Um, they're well out in advance. I know there's some things that come up and life does throw us um, things. And I know sports are important to a lot of your children. And I get it. And dance and everything else. But this is a sacrament also. So we ask that you have your child at least help us and help them get ready and fully prepared to receive the, the Eucharist on May 6th. On the back of your form of the same paper is um, little receiving Holy Communion practice directions. Usually we don't give these out to, until the workshop or the retreat. But I wanted to give it to you tonight so you can start working with your children. These are every Sunday, every read, what we, what we respond to at Mass. They should hear it, they should know it, they should be responding, okay? So the first part, obviously, is after, before the whole, prior to the Holy Holy, there are some words that the priest will say. We want your children to learn these responses. The doxology and the great amen, that's after the um, liturgy of the Eucharist at the end, right after the, you know, the bread and wine turns into the body, blood, soul, divinity of Jesus, okay? There's a great amen, we'll say the Our Father, many of the, ch the children already know the Our Father, and then obviously the For the Kingdom, and then the big one at the bottom. For your child to receive the Eucharist, they must be ready and accepted, ready to accept Jesus into their heart, their body, their soul. So when the priest says, behold the Lamb of God, who takes, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. That is, them, that is Jesus calling them 
to the supper. So they need to know how to say that response. Say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word so my soul shall be healed. That is important for them to learn and to say. If you notice when we were back in when COVID hit and the priest was, we would get communion at the end of mass, or, and that means mass was over, they still went back and said these words because we have to make sure we're prepared to receive them. So work with your children to prepare and to learn these words, okay? We want them to know that they're going to be receiving Jesus in just those few minutes after they've done this. So we give this to you now. We will also rehearse this with them. We will go through it at the retreat, at the workshops, but I'm giving it to you sooner so you can work with them at home. Also, when they come to Mass, they will hear it being said and they can respond. What's my next thing? Um, that is on the website. I didn't print that out. Everybody always asks, what does my child have to wear? What can they wear? All right, so that is a guideline that we're given from the diocese. The old tradition of girl, boys wear blue or white suits and girls wear those pretty white dresses. Many of them still do, but it's not, you don't have to do that. Girls do not have to wear white dresses. But every time I say that, girls always come in their white dresses because that's what we think of when we think of Holy Communion. Same thing with boys, blue, uh, blue suit, white suit, black suit, okay? So the guidelines are up there. Um, no shoe, no sneakers, no claw, no Crocs, you know, dress shoes for boys, dress shoes for girls. Um, so that goes through all that for you. And that again is on the website and we always hand it out. I just want to give that to you now because I'm sure many of you are out there shopping. Um, if your child, if your daughter, little girl is gonna wear a dress that has thin straps, they must be one inch, okay? Shoulders are to be covered. If they don't, if you get one with spaghetti straps, we ask that you put a uh, sweater on her, okay? And that's just for the modesty and for being here in the, in the church, in God's house. Again, that comes directly from the diocese. I don't make these rules. And the other one up there is about photographs. There is no photographs or videography during Mass. And we go over that as we go on. So that is, I think, pretty much all that I have on there. I, you have the important dates. Again, make every effort to make all the dates that are on here. It's for your benefit of your child. I mean, I don't, I mean, we're here for every one of them. We want to make sure your child is ready. Again, it being different, different to us, different to them this year, uh, preparing and getting them ready to receive. If your child, I'm, I'm going to ask now, if your child has a gluten allergy or do they, if they have a texture, we find this out too late, and we want to be able to give you some of the hosts so you can practice with your child at home. So if your child has a gluten allergy, that I have to get order, gluten host. But if they have a texture issue, like if they take it and they gag or they can't swallow it, please let us know because we want to be able to give you some to take home to practice with them. All right? Does anybody have any questions? No? We're all good? All right. Okay, so then we are going to close with a prayer. I know she won't put it up there. All right. So if we can all pray together, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Jesus, after your resurrection, you appeared to the disciples as they were walking. They did not recognize you until later, when, sharing a meal, you broke the bread as you did at the Last Supper. Help us to recognize you in one another, and join us to one another and to you in the precious sacrament of the Eucharist. We ask this in your name, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If you came in late afterwards, I have these papers in the back of the church along with the pamphlet. And thank you again for coming out tonight. I kept it short. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you.